I like the idea of the Real News because we are in desperate need of independent sources of information and analysis. The question of the prosecution of George Bush is one of the issues that will face Barack Obama as he becomes the next president of the United States. Many people think the lack of impeachment procedures set a dangerous precedent about the unitary presidency and the abuse of power. Will Barack Obama address any of this? To analyze this question, we are joined now by David Swanson, who's the founder of After Downing Street and Washington director of Democrat.com. He joins us from Virginia. Welcome, David. Good to be here. So, David, uh, with Democrats.com uh, and the uh, After Downing Street, you guys campaigned quite heavily in favor of Barack Obama. On the other hand, he, he doesn't have the most, uh, what can I say, courageous record in terms of voting for the, on the FISA bill and uh, standing on his questions uh, relationship to impeachment. Talk a little bit of your response to his election and then what, do you, what will be a litmus test for you whether he's actually taking on some of the abuses of the last eight years? Well, here I sit in Virginia, which up through 1964 always voted for a Democrat for president because the Democrats were more racist. And from that point to this, always voted for a Republican because the Republicans were more racist. And we've been through a campaign where the Republican candidate and uh, running mate ran a racist campaign, and Virginia has voted for Obama for not only a Democrat, not only the less racist party, but a black man. Uh, and so I'm absolutely thrilled. This works wonders for Virginia politics as well as for national politics. Um, and it would have been an absolute disaster for the peace movement, for any sort of justice movement to have McCain and Palin in there. Barack Obama is not about to solve all the country's or the world's problems left to his own devices but there is the possibility of public pressure influencing him. He is a, a politician who responds to public pressure, and so there is hope. There is a role for well, U.S. Well, citizens. One, one, of, one of his first major decisions was his chief of staff, uh, and he's offered the job to Rahm Emanuel. Uh, what do you know about Emanuel, and what does it tell you about the direction of the Obama administration? Well, of course, he already picked as a running mate a senator, Joe Biden, who had led the charge for the invasion of Iraq uh, in the Senate back in 2003. So that was not encouraging either. Rahm Emanuel has been the amazing early bad news following uh, the last two elections. In January of 2007, Rahm Emanuel told the Washington Post effectively, look, we're going to let this war go on for two years so that we can run against it again, uh, which has cost nearly 2,000 uh, U.S. servicemen and women their lives and hundreds of thousands of Iraqis. And then following this election, we get the news that Emmanuel is being uh, offered the job of chief of staff, which presumably he's going to accept. This is a disaster. Uh, you know, it, it's good to have someone who knows Congress as your chief of staff. It's not necessarily good to have someone like D David, Emmanuel. D David, what was the quote? Because that's uh, that's quite of a, a kind of an outrageous thing he would have said to allow a war to continue for pragmatic yeah. political purposes. What was the what was the quote to the Post? Well, there was there was a story in the Washington Post in January two thousand and seven, and it quoted. Uh, Emmanuel in some cases, and it paraphrased him in others. On Iraq, it was a paraphrase, but it was to the effect of don't look to Emmanuel's Democrats for any solution on Iraq. They see it as Bush's war. They want the Republican Party to fall apart, and they want to be there in two years to pick up the pieces. And, and, and so this was telegraphing to the country that the Democrats were going to do what, in fact, Emmanuel orchestrated, and they did for two years, and that was pretend to try to end the occupation of Iraq, pretend that legislation was needed, and blame the Republican filibuster power and the president's veto power for their failure to do what they could have accomplished simply by ceasing to fund the so, occupation. So the, the, the pro-Emmanuel argument that we've been hearing is that he's a fighter, he, he's, it's, it's actually throwing down the gauntlet by Obama, even though he's talking about bipartisanship, he's got himself a pit bull to fight the Republicans. Uh, does this uh, a sign of perhaps some uh, you know, ability to fight on behalf of Obama? 
Well, it, it, it's, it comes down to a question of what you're going to fight for, right? I mean, Josh Lyman, the, the fictional character based on Emmanuel, had some principles he wanted to fight for. I don't know what those are with Emmanuel. If, if you look at the Reuters story about this today, there's a quote from a Republican who's very, very pleased because he thinks Emmanuel's job is going to be cracking the heads of Democrats to move them from the left to the center, which is what his job has been for the past two years. So it wouldn't surprise me if that were his job. And that's, that's my worry. Emmanuel is a guy who two years ago recruited pro-war candidates to run against anti-war Democrats in primaries. This is a guy who directed all of the money from Washington to pro-war candidates. Uh, this is not encouraging to me. For people that wanted fundamental change, real change, it doesn't sound like that's what it's going to be. But the potential of a war within the Democratic Party between the progressive and conservative sections must be very real. It sounds, in, in picking Emmanuel, he's, Obama's clearly picked the side he's coming down on. The centrist, the right-wing side of, of this debate is far and away superior to Bush and Cheney or, or McCain and Palin. There's, there's absolutely no question. But it's not a transformational candidacy. It's, it's not a, a major change and change we can believe in. It's, it's absolutely not. When you're talking about keeping on the same Secretary of War or, or Defense, as we misleadingly call it, that Bush had, that McCain also was proposing to keep on in, in Gates, that you're talking about bringing Colin Powell into your administration, a, a man who went to the United Nations and blatantly lied us into an aggressive war. Th this is not what people voted for. And so this, this honeymoon has been very, very short-lived. It was a matter of hours before Emmanuel yeah. was offered this job. Now, you've been very involved originally in the in, uh, attempt to, to have an impeachment of Bush. Uh, the, uh, you've been supporting efforts to prosecute George Bush. And at the core of that is the issue of defense of constitutional rights and abuse of power. What, what would you be looking for, both in terms of an appointment of attorney general and pieces of legislation from this administration that might, uh, might undo some of what was done in the last eight years? Well, we, we were talking offline about uh, making Michael Ratner attorney general. I certainly would applaud that and do anything to make it happen. I, I don't expect it to happen. Um, this is a, a candidate in Obama who said months ago that he was unaware of any crimes having been committed by Bush and Cheney, but he would immediately have his attorney general look into the question. So we should hold him to that. He has committed to uh, revising the Patriot Act to restore some rights. He's committed to no longer using signing statements to rewrite laws as he signs them into law. You know, these are encouraging things. We should, we should push for them to happen. But my concern is that if we have eight years of a president blatantly violating the law, rewriting laws with signing statements, and then the only change is that the next president ceases to do it, where's the deterrence down the road? to future presidents. What tells them they can't do what Bush and Cheney did? Uh, which is why I continue to push for impeachment, which can happen even after you're out of office, and for prosecution, which is very, very low on Obama's list, but which can happen at the state or local level, which can happen in foreign countries, which can happen internationally. We need that, that accountability, not just better policies, but, uh, but I'm, I'm very happy that we will be seeing some better policies uh, in the immediate future. Uh, thank you very much, David, for joining us. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us. And remember, again, there's a donate button, and I know I keep nagging about this, but if, we, if you don't support us, we won't be here. Thank you very much. Endless wars, abuse of powers, declining living standards, and the climate change crisis. The stakes couldn't be greater in the U.S. 2008 presidential elections. And with your help, we're moving our news operation to Washington, D.C., where we'll focus on money and corruption. For example, big oil and arms companies shape American economic and foreign policy with far-reaching effects on the lives of ordinary people. With allies in government, trade unions, the media, and in think tanks, they're a hidden hand that controls the commanding heights of American politics. Taking on the industrial military complex is what real change requires. Even former presidents and high administration officials have said so. But corporate television news treats such positions as marginal. Well, we think it's the decisive issue in the coming presidential elections.
Uncompromising journalism requires questioning assumption, interrogating structures of wealth and power. Corporate TV news just won't do it. Only a news organization that's truly independent can tackle such issues with courage and tenacity. And we'll take on corporate TV news live. You'll watch TV news with our panel of writers, journalists, scientists, and historians. You'll be able to join in by phone, webcam, chat. Together, we'll discuss and debate what's the real story and take on the myth and the propaganda. But this is only possible if you support us now. We need to prove that a viewer-funded model works. So if you want the real news, we need you now. Please click on the donate button and give generously. Now's the time to decide if you want the real news to thrive. Your tax-deductible donation makes it possible. Please contribute at therealnews.com.